what's happening everybody welcome this is whistlekick martial arts radio where we coordinate outfits and we don't even realize it episode something or other but today we're talking about fundraising now this doesn't necessarily apply only or not at all to nonprofit martial arts schools we're going to get all into this so stick around joined as often by my co-host the illustrious Oof. finally shorn andrew adams you cut your hair today? Uh, you're glowing um, i am what can i say man i'm in a good mood nice nice is that a today haircut uh no no, no. oh okay no. Oh, all right there it is i can see i can see when you turn your head yeah it's a little bit so illustrious uh as in uh someone who illustrates i'm not much of, a, of an artist I'm, no that I'm, would like, be artist like pen and paper illustrative oh okay illustrious bright shiny oh there we go okay yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show who takes frequent tangents. And what do we do on this show? Well, we talk about martial arts. We talk about things related to martial arts. We have a goal of connecting, educating, and entertaining the traditional martial arts world. And if you want to see the things that we do in addition to this show, you can go to whistlekick.com. One of the things you're going to find at whistlekick.com, whistlekick.com, is our store. And if you use the code at whistlekick.com, podcast one five you can save 15 percent on anything at whistlekick.com did i say it enough did you hear it do you know what the website is let's it probably it, it's a, it was at the bottom right here too I, I i bet julius put a crawl up nice once in a while i get somebody who asked me what's, what's the what's whistlekick's website again <laughs> i'm not doing my job if you're asking that question if you want to go deeper on the show we get our own website for the show whistlekick martial arts radio Dot com two episodes each and every week shiny polished ish new episodes each and every week all for the goal that i mentioned earlier and i'll hit it again because it's really important to us connect educate and entertain now if the things that we're doing mean something to you if the show means something if our social media if our books if the general uh push that we are applying to the industry mean something to you you've got a lot of ways you can help us out you can make a purchase you could maybe tell a friend about what we're doing maybe share an episode or consider joining our patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash whistlekick that's the place to go you're going to get access to bonus content for as little as two dollars a month the more you're willing to part with the more we are willing to give you it's about value exchange and we work hard to make sure that you get the better end of the deal and if you want the full list of all the ways you can help us in our mission, go to whistlekick.com slash family. There's no link to that. There's no button. If you're going to type it in, I updated it again today. It, there are frequent updates there, uh, bonus exclusive, lots of good stuff there. So, Andrew. Yes. Fundraising. It's a word that makes some people cringe. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And this this topic episode was brought to us by a very good friend of the show, Stacy. Um, Hi, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to to get feedback from listeners yeah. on what they would like to hear about. Yeah, I think I think the challenge for people is that when we talk about fundraising, we're usually thinking about things from a nonprofit perspective. <clears throat> And most, not all, most martial arts schools are for-profit businesses. They may not make much money, mm -hmm. but I think for a lot of us, it's that there's almost a conflict there. And I've seen it myself with Whistlekick. Whistlekick is a for-profit company that just doesn't make any money yet. <laughs> so there are a number of people who help. They see the value, they see the vision, and they're willing to contribute some of their time. They essentially volunteer. They volunteer for a for-profit company. And there are times I've mentioned that to people in conversation and they get, I can see them get visibly uncomfortable. So let's get that part of it out of the way first. And then we can talk some of the specifics. Fundraising can be nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Raising money can be a, a lot of different things. The conversation you and I are going to have today, I expect, is going to skew towards nonprofit, charitable, things of that nature. But the principles we're going to talk about apply to anything. The principles of sales and marketing are fairly universal. And while we're not going to talk about all of them, and not all of them will be equally applicable in all situations, I think there's a lot of value there regardless. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about things like kickathons and breakathons and other yeah. other thons. 
that one might consider <laughs> in the context of martial arts. But just because your school does not do those things doesn't mean you won't find some value here. Maybe you want to start one. Uh, but it also doesn't mean that those things have to be done solely for the benefit of a charity. There are a lot of different ways you can do these things. And we're not going to tell you how to implement this stuff. No. Or, or, or I should say where the money goes. We're not going to tell you that. We're going yeah. to give you our thoughts on this whole world because it's something we, we've actually done very little discussion on over the years. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to be looking at it more in terms of things that we have seen uh, or experienced ourselves directly and thoughts on how you might, you know, if you're interested in doing something like that, that just might give you some ideas. Uh, but I, but I think you're correct. Most of the ones that I personally have been involved with have been, um, it wasn't so much fundraising f money for the school itself, although there's nothing wrong with that. It has been f the school itself fundraising money for something else for, mm -hmm. like you said, like, like a nonprofit, uh, something of that nature. That's not to say you couldn't fundraise for your school, but it just isn't something that I personally have seen a whole lot of. The, the place I see probably the biggest exception is I know schools that operate an internal scholarship fund for students mm -hmm. who cannot afford to pay. <clears throat> and instead of the school saying, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna not charge you, which, which can get a little messy in the dynamics of the school, you know, they will offer scholarships, you know, partial full scholarships and they create a fund and they do some things throughout the year to put money into that fund. Yep, yep, exactly. You know, I was with an organization, not a martial arts organization, but they had what was called a sneaker fund. Mm -hmm. And it originally started to help buy kids, you know, youth who came from homes that couldn't afford to buy sneakers for, for sports. And um, the, the student could, was, don was given a free pair of sneakers from the quote sneaker fund. Yeah. Uh, and it was, and it essentially was exactly what you're talking about—a scholarship for kids who really couldn't afford it otherwise. Yeah. So when we talk about fundraising, we're usually talking about some kind of semi-social event that it involves activities that are not done frequently by that group, mm -hmm. with an eye towards collecting money from inside and outside that community yep. for the purposes of supporting some broadly supported liked group or organization or entity. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up we operated a kickathon at the karate school I attended. Yep. Uh, how many kicks could you do in, I think it was two minutes, and you could switch feet. Um, and I don't quite remember the recipient. I think one year was Ch Children's Miracle Network. Uh, that might have been the charity that we were collecting for. And we would go out with pledge sheets and we would get you know, friends and neighbors, you know, most of you were kids. At some, most of you were kids at some point. And <laughs> you did something where you had to get pledges from friends yep. and neighbors. And you know what those sheets look like. Well, how many kicks do you think you're going to do? I don't know. Last year I did this many. Okay. I'll sponsor you at a penny, a kick, a nickel, a kick, a mm -hmm. dime, a kick. Very, very deep pocketed individuals sponsored at a quarter, a kick. Mm. Um, the first year we had someone who did not know what was going on and sponsored at a dollar a kick. That was, uh, that was a big bill. That was like $200 for that person. Yeah. Yeah. So I also, when I was a kid, our school also took part in a kickathon, but it was run a little bit differently. Uh, the, on the day of, and we knew this ahead of time on the day of, we as a group were going to be doing each individually 1,000 kicks. A lot of kicks. 
it's a lot of kicks and it took place over the course of like i, I don't remember exactly the time but it was like you know two or three hours you know mm-hmm. there were like there were some breaks and stuff in there and so you went around asking for pledges at a penny a kick if you did all ten thousand, if you did all a thousand kicks it was only 10 bucks right mm-hmm. or you know maybe somebody would be you know two cents a kick and it was like mm-hmm. 20 bucks and i was like that was really good um but it also you know if you didn't complete your thousand kicks because you would you'd go around afterwards which was maybe not the smartest way to do it because it was difficult to collect money afterwards but the thought was if i only did 800 kicks and you sponsored me for a penny then you now only owe me eight dollars right and so it really forced me to want to do all thousand kicks to collect as much money the downside doing it that way was after the fact i had you know i did do all thousand kicks but if i hadn't I would have had to like go around and like figure out who owed me how much per kick. And it was a little more difficult, uh, you know, paying up front is definitely a little bit easier, but it, mm-hmm. it gave a little bit of, for lack of a better expression, a little bit more skin in the game the day of to make sure that I, I, I got all yeah. 1000 kicks. Yeah. So we're kickathons, different formats, breakathons. Um, good friend of the show, Kelly just did a breakathon at, at her schools, um, you know, th- there, there are a lot of thons. Yep. Right. Um, but those aren't the only ways that people can, can offer charitable things, right? We, we tend to get into these, these mindsets where charity has to be something like this, but I know a school where they have partnerships with parent teacher organizations where they donate their first month tuition and student uniform to the PTA. The PTA sells that in their community. Mm, So it works out really well. You know, the school, yeah, the school takes a hit, but now the PTA is deriving financial benefit by sending them students. Everybody wins. Yeah. Right. That's charitable. Is that fundraising? Eh, depends on your definition of fundraising. Yeah, it could be, it might not be. Yeah. But what I think I, I, I use that as an example for is to encourage people to think outside the box. If you're doing the same sort of charitable fundraising year after year after year, the same people are going to contribute the same amount of money. And as fun as it is, doing the same old does get boring. Yeah. I, I agree, but you did mention a word that I think is very important when you're doing anything like this, and I think you should tr- make an endeavor to make it more fun than fund. Mm. Um, and I actually know nice some organizations plan. that call it a fun raiser. Mm. Um, you know, money is involved; they are raising funds, yeah. but. Uh, it has to be enjoyable because that's what gets people enthused about it, about doing it and being a part of it. It's true. Um, you know, for sure. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be an, a thon. You know, I, I, my last school did a Kicks for Cancer event every year, mm-hmm. and they just got as many people as they could to just come and do as many kicks as they could in the hour and a half long. You know, the class is normally an hour and a half. And so the instructor has a list of kicks they're going to do and they just see how many they can get through and and you know they just ask people to to donate what they can and you know it doesn't have to be a per kick um and you know the school usually sponsors you know and and back up that was me backing up they also the more people that are there if there's 10 people and they all do 100 kicks that's more kicks than only having five people there. And so they, they count the f- total number of kicks that were kicked throughout the hour and a half. And then they determine it that way and add up the total that way too. So most of the things that we've talked about thus far have been pledge based, you know, yep. based on a certain amount of activity, there's a certain amount of financial uh, contribution from people towards whatever the, the charity is, whatever the, destination is but it doesn't have to be that way what if it was a special edition of a school t-shirt normally you charge twenty dollars but you do a special design and now you charge thirty dollars and it's on a different color and it's only available 
for this period of time. And, you know, the extra money, you know, that extra $10 goes to this group. Or what if it's, you know, for the month of May, June, whatever, for the summer, any private lessons scheduled will give half of the money to this group over here. Yeah. Now there's an important aspect when we start talking about things like that. And here's the, this is kind of fallen off, but you probably remember a few years ago, nearly any large organization had a red version of their products. I do remember. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. App, Apple did it. Um, I, a lot of companies did it. Mm -hmm. Apple's the one that's, that's front of mind for me. And quite often those versions of the product cost a little bit more. And they were very clear, you know, we're going to donate this money to this organization. I believe it was um, African, it may not have been related to HIV, but it was destined for Africa. Mm -hmm. And so not only did you get the product that you wanted, but you got a special edition of the product and yep, yep. it allowed you to create an emotional attachment to it in the way that, you know what? Yeah, I spent money on this. Yes, I bought something for myself, but I did a little bit of good in the process yeah. because I, let, let's face it, any of us at any time could go donate a dollar. I would venture that just about everybody watching or listening to this could donate a dollar a day to some organization. Yeah, yeah. How many of us do that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just one more thing. And most of us are busy and we don't think about it that way. And if we think about $30 a month, we're like, I don't know if I want to do that. So it, it's if you as an organization, as a martial arts school, create opportunities where people can spend a little bit more than they're already spending on something and you could donate that, that could work really well. Here's a completely off the cuff idea I've never thought of before. What if you had an option on your tuition for people to round up five bucks mm. or it could be, you know, certain times a year or whatever on your monthly tuition Yeah, and you donate that money. If you yep. make it easy for people, this is the thing. Why do most fundraising events involve a kid going to a person's house saying, <laughs> please, sir, can I have some pennies for my kicks? And then going back later Please, sir, I kicked a thousand times. Can I have nine dollars? Processing fee. And then <laughs> they take that nine dollars and that nine dollars and that eleven dollars and they send it over to, you know, children Where? without I'm, I'm trying to come up with something funny and sarcastic, but I, I'm I'm it's gonna fall, I can tell. So we'll just leave it. Children without something dot it's okay. Dot something. Yeah. No, I, I get that. It's got to be easy. Yeah. You know, other ideas that you can do is partner with another larger organization. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of a, a youth organization that I'm involved with that partners with a local barbecue place. Mm. And uh, they they have a certain, uh, they pick it one day a year mm -hmm. and for like six hours, you know, the, the pr money that comes in during that six hours a portion of it is given to the youth organization um and so the the kids in the organization like tell all their friends they tell all their parents whatever go to the restaurant and you know during these times because it will help us out um there's no reason you couldn't do something like that as well if, especially if you have a large organization that is very community oriented mm -hmm. in your you know in your town that can that can be huge it's a wonderful opportunity if you see, I'm a firm believer in stacking the benefits of these things just because something is done as a fundraiser doesn't mean it can't benefit you or your school or other organizations Absolutely. just because it's a fundraiser doesn't mean it can't also put money in your pocket it all depends on the specifics and, and how you see things promotion press advertising whatever you want to call it it's a wonderful opportunity to get your school known. If you have just started a school, this is something that you can do to get some really effective publicity. By connecting with a larger organization, you now get to leverage their network potentially. Exactly. You know, I, I've done some of this in the past. Um, I, I had nothing to do with martial arts, but I lived on a roof for four days. And 
did it in an, uh, to raise money for a children's based organization here in Vermont. We raised, you know, a bunch of thousands of dollars and it was fun, fun, fun fact. It was like, we cobbled together live streaming. It wasn't really a thing, but I live streamed the entire time I was on the roof and we got wonderful press. I mean, we had, we had inquiries nationally because of what I was doing. Right. So if, if you do it right, everybody wins. And I think those are the best efforts where everybody wins. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would agree. Making it so that all parties involved get something out of it. You, you can't lose. Let's talk about the participants. Those are the ones that we really haven't talked about. We've talked about the beneficiary. We've talked yep. about the school. What about the people participating? You know, whether we're talking about a, a fawn or something else, mm-hmm. what, what is important to make sure they, you talked about calling it fundraising, that making sure they have a good time. What's important there? Yeah. Um, it's got to be something, in my opinion, it has to be something that they are used to doing, but they're not used to doing. Mm. Example, a kickathon, as an example, we're going to do a thousand kicks. I would say the vast majority of people listening have, do kicks in their school, what, regardless of what that kick is. But how many of them do a thousand kicks in one night? Very so few. It's something, so it's something that they're used to doing, but it's something they're not used to doing. I think that aspect in some way is really important. Same thing with a breakathon. There, if if your school's holding one, I'm suspecting you do breaking already, but you probably don't break in the numbers that you're going to do during a thon. That's what makes it spectacular in quotes, right? It's right. it's above and beyond. It's abnormal to do this sort of thing, which makes it intriguing and fun for those people that are doing it. Right. right. I, I like that. I like that distinction that it's something that people have experience with but the implementation is novel. Because if you just said, let, let's take the counter example. We're gonna have class. We're gonna work on all of our basic kicks and you don't even have to count them. We have somebody on the side who's gonna count because I'm gonna count to 10. Yep. And you're gonna do 10 front kicks and then we're gonna turn around and you're gonna do 10 front kicks back. And then you're gonna do 10 side kicks. And then you're gonna turn around and do 10 side kicks back. And now we've done 40 kicks. And everybody's like, this is the worst fundraiser ever. I'm so boring. How much do I have to pay to not do this? Yep. Right? Yep. <clears throat> that's a class. That's not a fundraiser. That's not something that gets people to show up. If there's a reporter on the side taking pictures, they're going to think, this is boring. Why did I show up for this? I could have gone and taken a picture of the bean supper at the church. <laughs> it's an opportunity for showmanship. It's an opportunity for pushing people a little bit, including the students. Most of us, if if we've spent any time teaching, we know that challenging our students, and if you're a student, you know being challenged is important. It's an opportunity for challenging, for being challenged that doesn't exist otherwise. I don't Mm -hmm. know too many instructors are gonna say, all right, today for the next three hours, we're gonna get up to a thousand kicks. It doesn't fit the tone of a typical class. Yeah, exactly. And so you pull people in on a weekend, maybe a Friday night. Some people that's the weekend. And you do something different and you're, it's okay to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, the one that I took part in, um, you know, they had figured out ahead of time, like the combinations of kicks and, and it, it started out very simple and basic, just like, kind of like you said, you know, all right, we're going to do 10 front kicks with the right leg and then 10 front kicks with the left. And then, you know, and it built up and it built up into combinations, which made it, that's what made it fun. Hmm. You know, we often in class will maybe do two, maybe three combinations in a row, maybe like front kick and then roundhouse kick. And then like maybe some sort of spinning kick. But then when we start getting into like three, four, five kicks in a row, all moving down the floor. Mm. And when we did it, we were in this huge, huge, huge gymnasium, like massive. It was like two, it was in a rec center. So there were two full-size basketball courts next to each other that Mm -hmm. normally has a divider between them. And they took it, they took the divider out. So it was like two full-size gym, you know, basketball gyms. 
and we were all lining the, the outside. So we're all moving towards the center as we're doing all these kicks. And that made it different and fun and enjoyable. And mm -hmm. we invited every school in the area. So it wasn't just our school students doing it. There were students that we had never met. There's another aspect of something that's new for the people involved. Cause I was standing next to somebody that I didn't know, but mm. I knew him by the end. Cause we spent three hours together yeah. kicking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as we, as we start to wind down here, a couple yep. things to think about. Think of all the things, as Andrew said, that people do routinely that could be done in a slightly different way in a maybe a measured way or in a presentation way katathon i know i know that's the japanese term and i generally stay style agnostic but the other terms don't work as well in that thon and i'm trying to come up with a synonym for thon you know like telethon and i'm not coming up mm -hmm. with anything and it's driving me nuts and i really want to google well, right now but i'm resisting be because it comes from marathon Oh, I think that's why. Like you're doing a marathon, you're if which is a mm. long distance thing. So a telethon is like you know you watch TV, but it's you a whole bunch of it's a whole bunch hour of two. It's a whole lot of them together, so it's a marathon. Whatever. It's, so it's a telethon. I think okay. that's why. That's where it comes from. Okay, that makes way more sense. Now I feel better. But it could be you're doing forms for 24 hours. You know, and you get somebody to sponsor you. Um, you know, could be grappling roles. There's so many things. It could, what would <laughs> 12 hours of roles and, you know, there, if you puke, you're out. <laughs> maybe, maybe we, we should do a podcast a thon. I did. So I implemented back when I was in college and I ran the TV station a 24 hour show mm -hmm. in response to the 24 hour magazine issue. There was, I was part of the magazine. We did an issue in 24 hours, content, layout, edit, the whole thing then sent to press. So 24 hours, but we did a 24 hour show where I just pulled everybody in and it was just content after content after content. We do like 30 to 60 minute blocks and swap people out. And I'll tell you, fill in that three, four, five a.m. space. That was rough. Yeah, <clears throat> I remember. Yeah. I remember actually the episode that aired last, that aired today, with me being sick and just like it was very much so like two, that. So two two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, yeah, it couldn't come out today on the day that this episode comes out. That was a reference to you. <laughs> As we're recording this, it came out today. Um. So be creative and have fun. And I would love for the listeners to let us know what kind of fundraising events they've been part of. Yeah. Did absolutely. they work? Did they not work? You know, let's, let's get a list going. Because I'm hoping that what we've done here today sparks some ideas for people. But I know if we bring in more ideas, it'll spark even more ideas. And I, I think there's a lot of value in that for people. A absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, let's all learn from each other. You know, if you had a fundraiser that worked great, how did it work great? Like, why did it work great? What did you do that made it work great so that others can do the same thing? And on the opposite end, if you did something that didn't work well, let's, let's make sure people don't repeat your mistakes. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else? No, I think we're good. All right. So if you like what we talked about and you want to add to the conversation, two places you can do it. One, you can go to the Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes and find the post that Andrew made for this, whatever episode number this will be, and comment. You can also go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and comment under the post that is this episode. You're also going to find videos and links and social media and all kinds of cool stuff for the episodes that we do over there. And if you're willing to support us in the work that we do, you have a few options. You might consider buying one of our books on Amazon, maybe telling others about the show or supporting us with our Patreon. <laughs> we have to tell them. You have to tell them that you didn't notice.
on the on that episode. Oh. So, yeah, so so two, two, epi- go, two, two episodes two, ago. two weeks ago when I'm like half dead of illness. And I said, Andrew, I need you to carry the episode. I, I need you to do like as much as possible. And he starts talking and I sent him a copy of, of this sheet that I use for the intro and outro stuff. And, and I knew, I was like, oh, the Patreon. So I, I found a post-it note and I just scribbled like patreon.com slash whistlekick. As you, and so he's talking about it and I was just like, he, he didn't even notice. He messaged me today that in the moment he had those, it was only after reviewing the episode he saw them. <laughs> Yeah, I and I laughed out loud because I had I was so uh, you were a little I nervous. nervous. I don't, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say I don't nervous. know that nervous is the right word, but I mean, I guess I was a little it's bit a, because a I little don't, nervous. I don't usually do the intro and the outro. It's something outside of my comfort zone, which is a good thing to step outside of. Um, but I was so focused on you know yeah. following the program, I didn't want to miss anything, and uh, you know, and so when Patreon dot com came up slash whistle kick you brought up this little post-it note, post-it and I totally note. Missed it. <laughs> it was very very funny do you find this kind of humor enjoyable would you like to combine it with martial arts training bring me in for a seminar you'll have fun you'll learn stuff uh, if you want you can have the full experience we can bring andrew in too Absolutely. and we'll probably get less work done but have more fun <laughs> just message us and, and we'll figure it out don't forget the code podcast one five it gets you 15 percent off anything like training programs or a shirt or a hat or um i don't have anything else handy other things like that at whistlekick.com and if you have guest suggestions topics suggestions we want to hear them let us know email me jeremy at whistlekick.com andrew is andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com our social media is at whistlekick everywhere you could think of that's it for now. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile and have and a great, have a great day. day.